Alright, we're going to go ahead and get started on setting up the website on Amazon Web Services. Uh, first thing you should have already done is finished up your code, uh, signed in to AWS. Uh, sorry, this is what you'll sign into. And uh, also sign into your uh, domain provider. I'm assuming it's GoDaddy. Uh, that's what I use. Um, very first thing that we're going to do is head over to the EC2 instance, uh, go on over to our running volumes or instances. Um, you, If you don't have anything, we're uh, go ahead and launch an instance. Um, we're going to use the free tier uh, so that we don't have to pay a whole lot. Uh, when you sign up for AWS, you get uh, one year's worth of free uh, web services. Um, there should be... Uh, let's see. So, I usually use the uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 base. That's uh, just easy. You don't have to deal with stupid... 2012's interface uh, and of course make sure you have the free tier eligible uh, as clicked um, you can edit your security groups that's what that warning is saying uh, one thing that you're going to want to make sure you do um, this is your RDP port range which is great you're going to also want to um, allow HTTP traffic as well uh, from anywhere and um, that should be all it for you there you can go ahead and cancel that one out review and launch go ahead and launch that up make sure you use your key pair going to use, I already have one, and if you don't have one, just create a new key pair. Uh, make sure that you do not lose it. Make sure that you save it somewhere that you will remember where it is, because if you don't have it, you're not going to be able to get your password. Alright, so now I'm waiting for it to launch. Um, I can view my instances right down here. Wait for that to finish up and that's just how you start a new instance and under any case um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna launch up my instance and I'll show you what I did to get started on that so once you have your instance up you can click on it hit connect uh, you're gonna get the password and to get the password you have to upload that uh, key your private key and uh, it'll Put, it'll populate it right in here, and then you're going to want to hit decrypt password to get your administrative password. Um, I should already have mine, so I'm not really worried about it. Um, I'm going to stop this one as well. So that's stopping. All right, so I'm on a Mac. Uh, same for Windows though, you, you know, no, it's all the same tool. You're just going to remote desktop. Let that launch. Not really worried about that. So I already have mine saved. I can show you my, my settings real quick. Um, oops. So Windows Server, this is my uh, PC name is, or it should say IP or server address or something. You just type in your public IP, make sure it's your public IP. You can see that right here uh, whenever you click on your instance. Your public IP is right there. Um, and uh, Type in your username, your password. Um, something else that you might want to consider doing is, and this is on, on mine, uh, for Mac it's different, but on Windows if you go to resources and then more resources you can actually add uh, you know, 
um, drives. So if I wanted to add my C drive, I would just navigate to my C drive and click OK, and that way I can get a hold of all of my files while in my instance. I actually add just specific websites so that it's easy for me to just transfer the files that I want. Um, for this instance, though, I am going to go ahead and add my desktop just to make it easy. Um, and then I can go back, make sure everything's good, exit out of that, and then I'm just going to sign on in. All right, so you're not going to have all this stuff up. This is me. Whenever you uh, quit out of your remote desktop, you want to make sure that you're not actually logging out. Uh, I am running Windows Server 2012 in this instance. Um, but yeah, whatever you do, don't come up here, hit the power button, and hit shut down or disconnect or log out. Because if you do that, your web server won't actually be running. And uh, so what you want to do is you actually just want to quit out of it. It'll give you a warning saying if you quit, then uh, it'll still be running in the background. And that's exactly what you want. So um, this is what your desktop should look like if you decide to use Windows Server 2008. It's a little bit different, but the idea is still the same. Um, if you come on over to your, oh, that's IIS. I will show you how to download IIS if you don't have that. Um, so you come over here. This is your server manager for Windows uh, Server 2012. Uh, server 2008 also has a server manager. It doesn't quite look like this, but uh, the add roles and features is exactly what you're going to be looking for. So if you click on that, uh, a pop-up will you know, pop up. This beginning page, don't even worry about it, just hit next. Um, you can do role-based or remote desktop services installation. You're not going to worry about that. Just make sure you hit role-based uh, or feature-based installation. Hit next. Um, you're going to select your server. And then from here, you can go through and find out where what you want to install. So um, there's a couple different things in here, but really what you're going to want is the web server. And so you just, uh, all you really have to do is just click on this box here. Um, there's some things in here that, I don't want to do that right now. There's some things in here that I didn't necessarily need, so I unselected them. You would be fine to go ahead and install pretty much everything. So just click on that and you would be good to go. Hit next on that. Once you get into there, um, make sure you have the .NET Framework 4.5 features um, just just to, as a prerequisite for Windows IIS. Um, and then I think you're actually good to go there. And then you hit install. IIS will install. Um, and if you come in here, you should actually be able to find it in your dashboard. If you can't find it up here, um, at least in Server 2012, you can easily click on the down arrow and look for it by typing in Internet Information Systems, or Internet Information Services, excuse me. So once you launch, uh, launch that up, the very first thing you'll see is the start page. Uh, I already have two websites running. You'll have a different uh, website as your default. It'll say default. Um, if you go in, you can easily start or stop over here in your right hand panel. Um, if you click on sites, you can add a new website. So if I wanted to add, um, I don't have any other domain names besides the ones that I have currently, but feet.org or something like that, I could actually draw the physical path and this is where you're going to want to actually have your files readily available. So um, where you want to store your files is go to your uh, file explorer, go to your local disk, and then you'll see INET pub. This is where your uh, where IIS stores uh, your websites. So if you double click in there and you go to www.root this is where you would store your website. 
so we have uh, my website and then Erica's website. Um, if you go in there, there's all my all my system files, and whenever I load in my domain name into the internet browser, it will load the index.html. So going back, if I wanted to browse, go to local C, inet pub, www root, and then just click on the Allen folder, and it'll automatically select that index.html file. Uh, and then the host name for the Allen website would be allenjbutler.com, and then you would press OK. I already have mine configured. I'm not going to worry about it. So if we want to go into my website, uh, I will show you some things that you might want to consider uh, enabling. Um, well, not enabling, but this is how you would configure it. So going in, uh, the major thing is making sure, I'm going to go back here. You go, go over to your GoDaddy website. We have our public IP, so we're going to copy that. And we are going to go to my account in GoDaddy. We're going to manage our domains. Let this load. GoDaddy is acting really slow today. But the idea here is that we're actually going to register this domain with GoDaddy and register it to my public IP of my web server. Um, so to do that in IIS, you would actually want to hit bindings, select uh, the add option here. You're going to find the IP address. That's just make sure it says all unassigned. Uh, it's obviously going over port 80 unless you buy a uh, SSL cert from a authorized cer certificate authority. That's a whole different spiel. Um, but then you would type in your host name. So my host name was alanjbutler.com. And then you would press OK. But then you would also want to make sure you do it for www as well, because it's a different domain. So you want to make sure that you have www. whatever your domain is, .com. And then you would also want to have www. Or, and then without the www. That way, people who type in just the domain and not the root domain or the subdomain www uh, will be able to visit your website as well. So that's what it looks like on the IIS side of things. And then if this will ever load, okay. I'll, show you, I'll show you in a second. I'm almost done with this. It's coming. Can I see it so far? Oh, I fucking got in. All right. Are you talking to somebody? No, I'm not. I'm recording, though. But, yeah. It's okay. Just get out. <laughs> I don't know. It's being... <laughs> All right, so we're back. Uh, finally got in. So what you want to do is you want to actually go in. I, I had to use Chrome, by the way, so excuse the different browser. Um, you want to go into the DNS zone file. And uh, here you can see that your A host record is the actual record that's going to be used to point your I public IP to this uh, domain. So I'm under alanjbutler.com. Um, all you have to do is uh, add a record. Make sure your host is the, just use the at symbol. Um, you're going to type in your IP for the points to. Leave the TTL for 600 seconds. Don't worry about that. And then go ahead and click save. So if this is what the add record looks like for the A host. Just type your IP in. Um, point it to, or I'm sorry, you want to type the at, at symbol in here, point it to the IP, and then click finish. Make sure you're, I would, you know, half an hour or whatever. Um, or if there, sometimes there's a default A record here, you can easily just edit that record here by hitting edit seconds. And uh, as you can see here, you can set custom 
TTLs. I would definitely have your TTL uh, at seconds for six uh, to, for your domain. That way, it updates quick, and you don't need to, you know, you don't need to wait a day or you know an hour for your website to go live. And then once you're done with that, uh, as long as you configured your security settings right, where you opened up port 80 for HTTP traffic to go through your uh, web server, you should be good. Um, just make sure that you have an index.html. If, uh, if you want to set up your um, 404 error handling, uh, you can use or I, th I believe it's sh to, uh, excuse me shtml uh, to do that. Uh, there's some different options that you can see in here that you can kind of go through. So your error pages uh, would be your 404 um, shtml dot shtml, and uh, you can Google that stuff to be able to figure that kind of thing out. Um, and that is it. I really don't see there's there's really not much else configuration you can do. Um, I'll show you what happens. So I can go to alanjbutler.com and my website will pop up. But you can also go to www.alanjbutler.com.